K-State Culturally is virtual programming centered on celebrating, uplifting, and educating the Wildcat community through the lens of communities of color who are affiliated and connected to Kansas State University. Hi, my name is Deja Jones. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a junior majoring in psychology here at K-State. This interview is part of K-State's Culturally Series hosted by the K-State Alumni Association, and today we are conducting an interview with a few Black alumni who used to do hair during their time here at K-State. And so now I'd like to take some time for our panelists to introduce themselves and say who they are and when they graduated. So um, Delshay, if you want to kick it off for us, go ahead. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Delshay Roberts. Um, I graduated in spring of 2020, um, so I'm recent, so it's, it's weird saying that. <laughs> I'm Jason Beard, and I graduated in woo, 19, fall 2019, so December, right before the pandemic. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name is Catherine Blair, or Kat, and I graduated fall 2015. It's nice to meet all of you, and um, we're just going to kick it off with a few questions. And so my first question for you all is, how did you become interested in doing hair? Um, I, yeah, I can start. Um, so when I was younger, my mom used to do hair in the living room. And I think I was like seven when I started braiding. And I would just watch her and, you know, all her clients would come to the house and get their hair done. And so I was like, you know, okay, let me start practicing my brat dolls that she brought me. And from there, I just, you know, started braiding. Well, a lot like Del Shay, I started when I was little, um, Probably around, about, I think about like uh, seven years old, I was in elementary school and I had a ton of Bratz dolls heads, all kind of doll heads. And um, I braided three little girls hair who were also went to school with me, um, but lived in my neighborhood for about $5 a piece and put some beads on there. And I thought, you know, I was rich. And from there on, my mom did hair when I was younger too. So I'm guessing that's where I kind of picked it up at. Um, but yeah, from then on, I just kind of, done hair my entire life after that. I also started when I was younger. My dad was a hairstylist and he owned a couple different hair salons in Kansas City. And so we were all always a part of the salon environment. And so my sisters kind of learned how to braid before me. But when I was around eight, that's when I started learning to braid and I started doing their hair, practicing on them. And then I was doing my friends at school and then I worked my, up, my way up middle school, high school and you know, now it's my full-time career, so that's how I got started. I had started early because then maybe I'd actually be able to do my own hair. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, did you have, like, a favorite hairstyle that you would like to do? Or when you were a student, did anybody have, like, any crazy requests? I feel like I did, like, a million heads of box braids when I was in college. I'm like, dang, can y'all pick something else? Like, <laughs> Because it was it was easy, you know, you could style your braids different kind of ways. So box braids was the go-to hairstyle. That and a sew-in would leave out. That was probably all I did all throughout college. Yeah, mine's be box braids. That's all everybody wants. They're like, oh, can I get some box braids? Can we do this? And I'm like, okay, what size you want? We can do some variations with that. But box braids for sure. Mm -hmm. Mine was actually locks. Um I think my niche is locks and I braid and things like that. And I did some box braids. Sew-ins are probably my second behind locks and then braids, but I did a lot of locks. You guys ever have like any unexpected customers like professors or like faculty? specifically in college or you say what in college or just like in general oh okay I don't know if I had any unexpected so to say um I have done I've done my one of my coaches here Ebony Halliburton um she got box braids one time and I've done quite a bit of people around the uh, Manhattan. I wouldn't say they were unexpected because some of them were my church friends and stuff like that who knew I did hair. Um, but I don't think I had too many that were unexpected that I wouldn't um, assume would come straight to some one of the black um, people who do hair, one of black stylists to do take care of their black hair in Manhattan. <laughs> I've been getting to do um, my chapter 
uh, Kappa Pi, uh, I started doing all their hair before I ever even joined. So I guess that was kind of unexpected because I'm like, they kind of put me on at K-State. I started doing their sew-ins and then they started walking around campus, showing their friends, telling their friends. And um, then I, I kind of was just like doing the whole chapter. So that was kind of unexpected, but a, a good thing for me. Okay, that's good. That's mm-hmm. good. I'm like, happy that you got to like be put on to other people and then like experience. Yeah, them. they hooked me up. We love to support black businesses out here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, mine was just, so my unexpected was I started doing, a, like, braiding a few people um, in the military, and I was like, I didn't, you know, I didn't know people in the military knew that I could do hair, because I'm like, this is, this is secret. Don't nobody know that I could braid hair. <laughs> we ain't gonna tell nobody. So okay. when they started reaching out to me, I'm like, well, who told y'all? <laughs> so that was unexpected. Okay. <laughs> I do wonder how they, like, found out about you. Like, somebody, they must have had, like, the ear on the street. Somebody must have, like, said something. I don't that know. I'm still now. trying to find out. <laughs> Okay. Um, the next question that I have is, how did doing hair support you while you were a student at school? Well, I would say, so I worked at um, K-State Superstore uh, when I was going to college there, and I thought I was making money, but when I look back and I realized, like, my biggest paycheck was, like, $350, and that's after two weeks of work. So, doing hair is actually what kept me throughout college you know my phone bill because I lived in the dorms for a little bit so paying my phone bill having food um outside of what you eat in the uh, what's it called where you eat at the uh, in the dining hall yeah the, <laughs> outside of the dining hall and then um when I moved to an apartment it helped me pay for that too so that was literally my bread and butter I don't know how I would have made it through without it. Yes, yeah, so for me, it's, it was more like recreational. So it was like, oh, okay, I need to do some hair this weekend so we can go do such and such. Um, and then, it, like she was saying, like it helped me pay bills um, too as well. Um, but a lot of mine was just like, okay, I want to shop a little, so I'm going to, you know, braid some hair. So For me, um, braiding hair helped me out quite a bit. I played basketball, so I was on full ride and got a stipend, but I also had to pay for daycare and things um, outside of the norm of college students with my son and stuff like that. So it helped me out quite a bit because it kept um, some money in my pocket, even though after long days, I pretty much did at least one or two heads. I tried to do like one usually, but I would do at least one or two heads almost every other night or every night. But it, it put some recreational money and some money for me and my son in my pocket outside of the stipend. That's good. So as a stylist, who does your hair or do you do your own? Oh, me for sure. Yeah, I, I, I rarely let people do my hair. The only time I let somebody else do my hair was I got some box braids like seven years ago and I didn't want to do them. And then I got, whenever I get a silk press, I will let one of the other stylists that I used to work with do it. But other than that, I really don't let people touch my hair for real. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> um, so for me, I do my hair a lot, but I also have two sisters that braid and my mom can braid too. So whenever I'm like, ooh, y'all, I can't, I can't do my hair this time. I just call my sister and I'm like, can you do my hair? We can exchange styles. Like, what you want to do to yours? <laughs> we can make this happen. So it's usually me or my sister. So oh, for me, is this, um, for me who did my hair while I was there, I did my hair quite a bit. I cannot stand to do my hair, but I have learned that stylists do not like to um, listen to other stylists sometimes because they, you know, and I don't want to step on nobody's toes and I say, I got to protect my edges over here, y'all. We got to make them boxes a little bigger. Don't grip too much, you know, so Shardia did, um, really good on my hair. She's still at K-State. Um, Shardia Lawrence, she plays, she ran track there, but she's still in Manhattan area um, doing hair. But she did uh, my box braids a couple times. And other than that, myself, I tried to get Dale Shady to my hair a couple times, but you know, she wasn't trying to, no, just, <laughs> she said she it was recreational. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> don't try to do no, it like I that. Do my her, but <laughs> I really, I tried to get Jess Shay to do mine. She was gonna be the person to do mine if I would have just booked my appointments with her. <laughs> mm-hmm. You 
any of you have like a favorite memory or like a memory that sticks with you from doing hair at K-State? Um, I don't have a favorite meme per se, but I I think the thing that I do appreciate about doing hair, it gives you time to like bond with um like your clients. Um, so really getting to know them. It's like when I do box braids, it's like I'm standing over for like six, you know, to eight hours. So it's like, we're not just going to sit in silence. So we sit and talk. Um, so I think those are some of my favorite memories and those help me create friends. Um, so it's like, okay, you know, I'm not just your stylist. You, we can go hang out, go to the bill or whatever that is. So. I think one of my favorite memories from doing hair is I did one of my teammates, Jada Thorpe. I pretty much sewed her hair in for her in a good less than an hour because it was in between shoot around and pregame meal and game time. So we had to we had this small window to get her hair done before our game started. And some more, so I was like running in, literally I was sprinting into warmups just because I had just got through finishing her sewing. And I was like, okay, but you got to sleep the top for yourself. You got to do all of that part and I got to go. So she was, she made it to the game right on time and everything too, but we were both pushing it. <laughs> I think my favorite memory, I think I got two. Okay. So one of my favorite memories is uh, that's, being in college at K-State is where I named my business. I actually, somebody else thought of it for me. And I was like, damn, that sounds good. And then I've been using it ever since. And it's uh, super catchy. And I just love it. And also, uh, one of my line sisters, she was getting ready for a black and gold pageant. And I think somebody was supposed to do her hair. And I think they canceled at the last minute. So she came to my house at the last minute. You know, I threw some curls in her hair. And uh, it, was, it turned out really cute. And she was bomb. So, yeah. Yeah, glad that you were able to come in and save the day. I, whew, something else. <laughs> so, uh, going off of what you said earlier, Delshay, about sort of like forming connections with the people whose hair you did, you really feel like doing hair like helped you foster connections that maybe you wouldn't have had if you hadn't did their hair? Um, yes. So, one of my favorite connections is with one of my advisors for, for my sorority is Mitzi. I love Mitzi, and I don't think we would be as close if I didn't do her. I mean, she's my advisor, of course, so we see her all the time, but I don't think we'd be as close um, if I didn't do her hair. Like, I go over, and she feeds me, and we, you know, we have a good time when I break her hair. <laughs> um, and, like, outside of that, it's like, you know, I spend a lot of time with her family now, and it's not just like, oh, okay, I need you to come over and do my hair. It's like, I want you to come over because, you know, I enjoy your company. So I think that's some one of my favorite relationships from braiding hair. Um, so the last question that I have is, do you have any tips for people who are maybe interested in starting to like do hair here at K-State or maybe people who just got here who are freshmen who are trying to find their niche in, um, in K-State? Uh, my advice, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. My <laughs> advice would be to, even at K-State, beyond K-State, wherever you are, do not be afraid to promote yourself. There are people out there that are looking for stylists, looking for healthy hair care. And I know that being around campuses, I've been to multiple different schools. I, I went to four schools around over my basketball career. And at every school, I had to almost re-promote myself to my people, uh, my, my potential clients, and let them know that I am here, I do this. I, it got to a point to where I was in the view and I was like, I got to have some business cards because I'm in the view. Just I see a dude with, with a head full of locks and I'm just like, do you have a loctician? Do you have a stylist? <laughs> no. Well, you have now met your new stylist. Like <laughs> that was just, I, I met a lot. I got a lot of clients literally just by doing that, by in the view. And some people, you, I say, don't be afraid because I used to be like, I don't want them to think that I'm trying to say that their hair is messed up. But no, you just, I'm just seeing you, you are you are a man with locks, a woman with locks, a, a black woman out here, and you might have some cute braids, and I want to know who did your hair, because I might need mine done, you know, anything like that, so just don't be afraid to reach out to people to promote yourself and your business that you want to launch. Um, my advice would be just, like, to be patient with yourself, especially if you're starting out doing hair, um, it might not be where you want it to be, but just be patient and then let people be honest with people too. 
um, like when you're going into doing styles, like let them know, like, you know, this may be my first time doing box braids, but you know, I've been practicing. Um, so I would just say be honest and upfront and then also just be patient with yourself and, you know, practice makes perfect. So. I think I would say, um, Oh, along with what she said about promoting yourself that's super super important um because I also went to two schools and I had built my clientele up at K-State just kind of by word of mouth I don't even think I had business cards yet kind of by word of mouth and um being involved in activities and people coming to find out that I do a hair um all of that went away when I transferred schools so um like you said, I, I had to do a couple people heads for free. You kind of got to strategize. I was like, who the popular people? That's who I'm coming to. I'm going to do their hair. They're going to show people. People going, and that's, and that's exactly what happened. So, um, and also being patient is major because nobody starts off with a full clientele making bread from day one. You know, it takes time. And also perfecting your craft is important. So making sure that you practice, stay up on the most current trends, um, practice on your friends so that way you can start posting and getting more people for those styles. So that's my advice. Final, final question. So do you all still do hair? And if you do, you want to go ahead and like promote yourselves? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I do. I still do hair. I'm actually sitting in the shop now. <laughs> but because um, I was like, what a better place to sit and do this interview? I might as well sit in the shop where it's quiet. <laughs> No, um, yes, I am Royale Crowns, and I actually will be coming to Manhattan the 25th through the 27th. So um, Ro my name is Jason Royale Beard, and that's where I got Royale Crowns from. So um, I have an Instagram, a Wix app, um, with my website up, so that's where we can book. But if we're booking for Manhattan on the 25th through the 27th, I have a document because on my website that is closed off. Um, for that time for me to actually book those clients and talk with those clients. So if anybody is looking forward to um, booking the 25th or the 27th in Manhattan, you can go on my Instagram at Royal Crowns or Jason Beard and I will definitely get in contact with you. Um, actually, um, I am a traveling stylist. So I'm going to have to book an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am in Manhattan still. I, I'm in grad school now. And so... We, we're still on a little recreational basis because I'm busy. Um, so trying to find time to do hair. Um, so, you know, if somebody needs their hair done on the weekend, just text me. But y'all got to know that I am busy. I'm probably reading and highlighting something. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but just let me know and we can try to work something together. Uh, I'm still doing hair. So I'm currently located in Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri is where I live. I work in Overland Park, Kansas, uh, K. Blair Hair Studio. Um, so if you're interested in booking an appointment, you can go to my Instagram. It is k.blairhair. Um, that's also my name on Facebook. And then that is my website name. So kblairhair.com. That's where you can book an appointment. You can view pictures. You can see my work. Um, leave me a review, whatever you want to do. And that's also where you can purchase the merch. So the Curly Girl, uh, tees, tanks, v-necks, uh, whatever. You can get all there at kblairhair.com. Okay, well, thank you very much for participating. And if you all would just like to find out more about our series, you can check Facebook at the K-State Alumni Association Facebook. And um, yeah. Thank you very much.